What's up, everyone? Welcome to the 14th episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast. Whoop, whoop. Whoops. 14 episodes. We are on the 14th episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast. Uh, test, test. Test, test. Well, wow, that sounds really loud. Test, 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 test. Test, 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 test. Okay, that's good enough. Good enough for me, boys. Bitches and hoes, don't fuck with me. Because I don't give a fuck. We come from Compton Streets. That's a good one. That's a good line. Uh, It's Friday. May 26th, 2017. I've never said the date before, but I'm saying the date right now. We are starting the show off right about now. Uh, <laughs> I got one card, one pink card, uh, Crab Apple Wars. When I was a child, why are we jumping into this so fast? Why are we jumping in? Um... The the pod the the background might change for a little bit. The whole thing might change for a little bit. I might have to record on. Actually, I'm not going to give any details away. You'll see what happens when it happens, and I'll explain then. Uh, so what's going on? What's going on in your life? You guys been eating some chicken wings? Chicken fried teriyaki wings. I should start talking closer to the mic. I realized. I just realized that. Wasn't talking loud enough. Now I'm not talking close enough. I can turn the gain up. Turn the game up. Get your party play up. Yeah. So Crab Apple Wars. Let's just get it started since I already said what it was. You don't know what a crab apple is. It's an apple that grows on a tree, usually in your grandma's backyard. And they're small, small apples, and they're usually pretty sour if you eat them. Nobody really eats them. Some some people make make pies and stuff out of them. I don't. But when I was a kid, uh, we used to throw crab apples at each other. There was a time when we had crab apple war. If they were rotten enough, they would explode on impact. You'd get hit with the crab apple. It would explode and it, it's squishy. You know what a rotten apple's like. And there was actual worms in them. Like you'd see on TV. <clears throat> like that kid's TV show from back in the day. I can't remember what it was called. But there was a worm and he, he had a boot. He hopped around in a boot. And he drove an apple car. It was a red apple car. Not like a... Not Macintosh apple. I mean an actual apple. But there was... There was uh, worms in those apples. That we threw at each other. And one time uh, there was... There was a young kid. His name was Gary. Still remember Gary. He kind of looked like Copper Cab. (laughs) <laughs> but we threw one at him, and I, I don't know, I guess it hit him in the face or in the eye, and he went home and told his mom, and his mom, or maybe it was his grandma, I don't remember, but some some woman came running after us, and we had to run into the field, we had to run away from Gary and his grandma, and we were throwing, we were throwing crab apples at his grandma, too. I stole Gary's bike once. Actually, Gary's bike was my bike forever. I took Gary's bike because he wasn't riding it. And Gary had a brand new bike. He had a brand new fucking super duper awesome bike. Like one of the new Mongoose bikes back when Mongoose was the shit. He had one. So I was like, damn, Gary, I'm going to use your old bike. It didn't have brakes. It, uh, rusty as fuck. If you hit a bump, the the handlebars go crooked, and then you have to put this. The remember when you were a kid, you had to put the tire that because that happened to a lot of kids. But you'd have to put the front tire in between your legs, 
and then grab the handlebar and straighten it back out. <laughs> you remember doing that? I did. I had to do that a lot with my bikes. I did that with every one of my bikes eventually. And all it is is the the main bolt or whatever just needs to be tightened. I assume that one pivot point. But you don't want to tighten it too much because then you can't steer. That would have been a good idea. Tighten down your handlebars on your bike all the way so you can't steer at all. <laughs> you can only drive straight. That's a that's a cool idea. I got boogers in my nose. There used to be a lot of horses around where I used to live. And we would feed the horses the crab apples too. Crab apples, crab apples, get yourself a crab apple. 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 I'm loving it. McDonald's, McDonald's. What was that? What was that song from Super Size Me? All the kids were singing in the in the intro. McDonald's, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken in a in a baseball bat. <laughs> I can't remember the rest of the, the other restaurant. Oh, Pizza Hut. McDonald's, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Pizza Hut. I gotta look up that song. Whoops. Uh, I don't even know what the song is. There we go. Can I take your order, please? Yeah. That's enough of that. McDonald's, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried. That's like, that's a bad thing to be chanting. I once did a podcast. I mean, it's not like I did that many yet. I've only done 14, but out of these 14, there was one that I did a little while ago. <coughs> Maybe it was like the sixth one or something. But the whole time, the audio was failing. Like this, uh, this cord was not in all the way, and it would unplug and unplug. And I didn't even notice at all. And I trashed that entire podcast and redid it. Never said anything till right now. That's an epidemic. <laughs> new, new, new dynamite gizmo rule. Every episode, I have to find a reason to incorporate the word epidemic. I have to discover an epidemic in this world. And this is, that's today's epidemic. Whatever I just said, I can't remember. No, you know what? You know what today's epidemic is? McDonald's, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Pizza Hut. That's the epidemic. And this is the epidemic. We've got marshmallow roasting humans on a bonfire. Doesn't get any more Kentucky Fried Chicken than that. Did you know that Jesus was a mushroom? Jesus of the Christ. Jesus. Back in the Jesus day. When was the Jesus day? Whoops. Don't touch the cords, buddy. Back in the Jesus day. I don't I don't I just want to see what it'll say here. 
Second coming of Jesus Christ. When's he coming back? Second coming, Jesus is soon. In fact, Jesus promised his disciples he will come again. When's it coming? Jesus, oh Jesus, Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, who cares when Jesus... Some say... Some say... Some say... That... You know, remember I was talking about the mushrooms? How they were underneath the cow patties? And, it, and again, more references to... I can hear so much through these walls. Whenever the neighbors make a noise, I hear every bit of it. Every bit. Even the sexual acts. So what I was saying is Jesus is the, the, the thoughts that came to mind when people were eating the mushrooms. And that's what they wrote down. It was such a, it was such an enchanting thought to them. And they wrote that shit down. And that's what happened. So stick your washers in your drying machines. That's a new saying I made up. This, you guys hear this? You guys probably can't hear this, but there is a lot of noise surrounding this place right now. A lot of noise. I'm just going to ignore it. In the future, nobody will drop the bass. No one will do the Harlem Shake. In the future, kids won't know how to use computer. Oh, right. So, if you think about it, or let's think about it, because you don't know what I'm thinking about, but I'll tell you what I'm thinking about. When I was a chid, a child of the 1940s, I didn't know a damn thing about fixing a vehicle. But I know when my grandfather or even father, when they were growing up as children or even through the teenage years, they somehow, you know, whether it was with their grandfather or their father, they found a way to fix vehicles. And that was just kind of a thing that every teenage boy knew how to do was fix their own car or at least do an oil change and change the tire and whatnot. But when I was growing up as a kid, I didn't know how to do anything to a vehicle or as a teenager, nothing, none of that. But I did know, uh, you know, like more than the average person about computers and a lot and pretty well everyone else who grew up in my generation grew up the same way. Because we were born into the time right when computers were just coming in. So we grew up with it. And we we learned, well, at least I learned, well, yeah, we all learned how to use computers by just doing it, by just using them, making mistakes, getting viruses, downloading LimeWire, finding ways to to do stuff. And we understood that we could use the device itself to find the answers on how to use the device. That's how cool the internet and computers are. You don't know how to use a computer? Well, use the computer to tell you how to use it. And now it's even easier. All you gotta do is say, hey Siri. And then, you know, because Siri's attached to the Mac computers now. If you have it activated to say, hey, Siri, she'll pop up and be like, what do you want, bitch? And then you say, uh, how do I use this thing? She'll tell you, or she'll give you the source on how to, uh, how to use it. But like, uh, so my, when my grandfather was a kid, if he were to, uh, they didn't have that at all. But if they need, needed to fix their car, that's how they would do it. They would just do it. They would just fuck around and tinker with their vehicles. And they had carburetors and, and shit like that. So they had different... They had to do maintenance. And maintenance was... Uh, 
was a different thing back then. Back then, if your muffler was broke, got a hole in it or whatever, they'd fix your muffler and put it back on. But now they just give you a whole new muffler. Because it's cheaper to just replace the item rather than rebuild it. Nowadays. But back then, it was cheaper to rebuild the item. Nobody rebuilds starters anymore or alternators or anything. None of that shit. No pumps. Well, some, oh yeah, pumps and shit. Yeah, they they probably do. They definitely do. But you could just as easily buy a brand new one. But if it's definitely like a starter or or definitely a muffler, you can get it fixed, but it's just as cheap to buy a new one and put it on. <laughs> I got. I know about vehicles now because I was in a profession of that field for a little bit, a few years. So, what are the next generation? Of, I had a. Th- I had a thought where the next generation of kids are gonna grow up. Oh, I can't remember what the thought was. I wish I would have wrote it down. But they're gonna grow up. Oh. <laughs> what was I thinking about? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, you know how old people nowadays complain about how hard they used to have it and kids nowadays have it too easy? Well, when, uh, when younger kids that are born now grow up in the future, and when I'm like the grandpa, I'll be saying shit like, yeah, when, when I was a young lad, I had to walk all the way to the post office to get my packages. But uh, but now, but in that time, the reason I'll be saying that is because the the ch- the children will have all their packages 3D printed right right into their living room. It'll be a thing. You don't have to leave your house anymore. If y- you could get your groceries all 3D printed, and in, in the beginning, it'll be slow, like groceries <laughs> take forever to get your full grocery order through the printer, but people will do it. And then eventually it'll get faster and faster, and and then big uh, 3D printers will become standard in a house, just like now a dishwasher is standard and a fridge is standard, where back in the day that shit was, you had to be fancy to have that stuff. And have a lot of money. But as technology builds upon itself faster and faster, we, we, uh, it becomes cheaper and more accessible. At first, only the military gets its hands on it. Then it gets released into the public, but it's really, really, really expensive and hard to find. And then slowly more people produce it, and then the prices drop, and then Eventually, it's reasonable, and then everyone has one. You can say that about any piece of technology. Because before there were fridges, people just stuck their meat. Well, there was different techniques, but there was some technique where you would put the meat in a box full of ice. It's called an ice box, I think. And then before that, so you had to keep putting ice in it every day. But I don't, I don't, I don't know where they got the ice. I think there was just a big block of ice that they chipped. I don't know. I don't fucking know. No, I'm just thinking of fucking million ways to die in the West when they had that big block of ice. I don't know. But then they also had salt. They used, they would just cover the meat in salt completely bury it in salt salt wars there was a whole war about salt and I got a book I'm gonna read about it haven't um I'm reading a book by Michiao Kaku right now he's uh uh what do you call it what the fuck do you call it yeah you're probably like oh you don't even know who the guy is you gotta look him up yeah that's right that's exactly what's happening. Physicist, that's the word. 
He uh, a book called um <laughs> it, it sounds like I'm not even reading the book. Physics of the Impossible. That's it. About like uh, uh force fields and uh time travel. All the science fiction sh- just crazy stuff that you would read about. He talks about whether it is possible or if there's ever going to be a way for it to be possible or if they're currently working on techniques to make these ideas possible. And it sounds like a lot of the shit is is viable and doable. Um, but not for a long time. But maybe not a long time. Who knows? Maybe Elon Musk is going to surprise us with something crazy one day. Or someone else. Uh, 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 uh. When I was going to school, we had, um, it was mandatory to do, to learn French from grades one all the way to, or no, grade three till grade nine. And then, yeah, because we live in Canada and it's a bilingual country. But um, if you wanted to, you could go to a French immersion school in junior high and high school where they only speak French and they teach you how to speak French. Well, they speak French and English, but they teach you how to speak French. But in the regular English speaking schools, you still got to learn the basic French. But anyway, we had a French teacher who was Italian, short Italian guy, chubby. He was awesome. His name was uh, Mr. Della Russo. And he also owns a pizza joint. How Italian is that? In, in my hometown. Best pizza I've ever had unbelievable literally unbelievable I've had pizza in Alberta and it's all shitty all of it's shitty because I've had such good pizza in Sydney even the worst pizza place in my hometown is still 10 times better than the worst or than the best here the shittiest pizza in my hometown it's ten times better than the best here. That's how good the pizza is back in my hometown. It's incredible. Out here it's too fat and doughy. And it's not it's not right at all. None of it's right. They know how to do it. They know how to do it in Nova Scotia. Definitely, definitely. Kenny's Pizza... Uh, well, Kenny's Pizza and Napoli Pizza. Those are the two best. Two best. I don't know. I just wanted to bring it up. Because that's what was written on the card, baby. Boom. Shock a lock. My stomach is freaking killing me today. I don't know what's going on. I got a space alien in my stomach. And it's trying to get out. I once went, uh... Another school story. I once went skiing on a ski trip. And. and We had to do the bunny hill first. Because I don't know what grade we were in. Grade 5 maybe. We had to go on the bunny hill first. To learn how to ski. And I got down the bunny hill. And when I got to the bottom I fell over. Well, I went really far. I went way too far past the p- the pylons and the the instructor didn't really give a shit. He just let me go cuz he kept he had to keep cycling the other children. So I kept going and I went for a while. And then I just fell over. And my skis were still attached. I didn't they're supposed to detach if you. But I wasn't going fast at all, so the 
and there wasn't much of an impact. I just, I just fell over really slowly, and then I couldn't get up. So, <laughs> so I sat there for like 15 minutes, just staring at all the other kids going down the ski hill. Cause I did, I did try to get up, but he just forgot about me. He watched me go down, and he watched me zoom past him, and he kind of laughed at me. And he just let me go. <laughs> and I went. And then I fell over and I was stuck on the ground. Watching the kids. And I, I can't, I don't even remember how I got back up. <laughs> Eventually I did get back up. Someone must have helped me. And then I got back over there. He didn't even realize I was gone. I, f I, f he f I felt like he was an idiot. But I don't know, maybe it was just me. I was too young to really analyze him at the time. I'd be able to tell you now if I went back and saw him. Curious George, the monkey. Who here is familiar with Curious George? Hi, I'm Curious George, the monkey. I don't know, I wrote Curious George, <laughs> it's high. I don't know what the hell. Like I said, sometimes I just write shit on these cards. And I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Just these thoughts come to my mind. My stomach is fucking killing me. I had this crazy diarrhea shit. I used the squatty potty. I don't have an actual squatty potty. But my stomach was hurting so bad. I, uh... <laughs> I used a bucket. Flip it upside down. That's my squatty potty. And it worked. Shot right out of me. Uh, 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 uh. I was thinking about nicknames. And. You know what? <laughs> I'm not going to talk about this. This is too ridiculous. I was going to talk about something, but now that I think about it, I don't want to talk about it. Sure, it's going to piss you off. You're going to say, why would you bring it up? Why are you even discussing it right now? Why don't you just forget about it? Well, because. It's my show. <laughs> Everybody, get your booty on the floor. Everybody get your booty on the fucking flow tonight. Ooh, 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 get your body. Copper Cab is back at it still. He's going hard, making fun of Fousey Tube. But who shouldn't make fun of Fousey Tube? That guy's a fucktard all around. P. -D P. Diddy style. P. Diddy's not a fucktard. But Fousey Tube, I don't know. I don't really like that guy. Well, I shouldn't say I don't like him. Don't know him? I know his. I know what he does on YouTube. And I'm not a fan. Uh, I don't dislike him at all. I'm just not a fan. I just, I don't know. And now he's trying to do this homeless thing. He's trying to, he's trying to, which it's been done before few times someone made a movie about it where they would only use craigslist to survive for a month and Fousey's doing it with youtube his youtube connections and Co copper cab uh copper cab's still keeping that fucking freak out character alive he just loves to spaz out in the mic. And I'm d I just don't find it funny anymore. I think the character is played out. I think if he just calmed down and just stayed himself, I think he could have a good, nice show. The one that he's doing with that pink background. I don't know what the fuck the show is called. If he has, or he, I th I'm pretty sure he gave a name for it. I just don't remember it. Oh, my stomach. Ow. <laughs> but I think he just needs to... Unless that's actually him. Unless he actually freaks out that intensely. 
but I don't think so. And I can't believe his whole transitioning to a girl thing was fake. If it even is fake, he still hasn't addressed the question. People a people asked him uh, to answer it. Uh, and he showed a bunch of questions of people asking him on the screen. But he, he just kind of passed right by the question. Didn't even answer it. So I do not know. I'm pretty sure it was all fake though, but he he definitely did a good job because I was 100% convinced that he was transforming himself into a girl because he did seem like a guy who just had too much anger problems and that's all he needed. But he seemed so serious. It didn't seem fake at all. It was a 20 minute video and he seemed super sincere. I don't think he's that good of an actor. He can't be. Maybe he is. Who knows? Who fucking knows? But my stomach is so much in pain. <laughs> Call an ambulance. Call an ambulance. <sighs> Just kidding. Oh, it's a poo pain. It's a... It's a digestive pain. It's not. It's not. It's not other kinds of pains. It's a poo pain. I think. What do I know? I'm not a doctor. Well, that's it for this Dynamite Gizmo podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Call an ambulance.